So what we've got going on here is uh, I'm going to go over the reading packet. Um, and here's how it's going to work. Um, I don't know how to turn those notifications off that are popping up, so I apologize in advance. I'll, I'll click them off as they come up. All right, so the first question, where and when was Hitler born? So this is A of part one, question one. All right, and so he was born in Braunau, Austria, 1889. Um, Braunau, Austria is a little town right on the German-Austrian border. All right, question two, what happened to his older siblings? All right, they both died of diphtheria. Diphtheria is what, it's a disease that you get, it's a stomach disease that makes you throw up and, and uh, go to the bathroom a lot and dehydrate you. And if you are compromised, uh, with your health, it'll kill you, All right? Today, not so much, but back then, um, when there weren't antibiotics and a lot of the drugs that we have today, diphtheria was a death sentence a lot of times. All right, C was, how was Hitler's dad described? Strict but comfortable, he was typical, like I would have called my dad strict but comfortable. If you messed around, he'd spank you. All right, probably what I need to do to my kids today more often. My daughter's staring at me right now, all right? But anyway, um, let's go to D. How was he treated by his mother? His mother babied him, all right? Probably too much, you know, so his dad would whip him and his mom would baby him, all right? And then E, what did his dad do for a living? His dad was a customs official, which that means he worked for the government controlling what kind of products and stuff went in and out of the country, right? Like today, if you travel overseas, um, when you go into the foreign country, you have to go through customs. When you come back into the United States, you have to go through customs and they check to see what you're bringing into the, into the country. Most of the times they don't check what you're taking out. They don't care what you take with you when you go somewhere else. Uh, but they're going to definitely want to know what you're bringing back in. And if it's worth money, they're going to make you pay tax on it and all that kind of stuff. All right, so his dad was a customs official. All right, now question two, where did Hitler move when he was three? Pretty big town in Austria called Passau. All right, and, uh, and so he lived in Passau. Again, most of, the, if you're a customs official, you're going to live near the border, All right? That's where you're going to go through customs, All right? Today, you go through customs and airports a lot, but back then it was when you crossed the border, made a border crossing, you went through customs. All right, B, what happened in 1895 and 1896, all right? All right, well, first, you, if you go in there and look, he moved to Hefeld, which is another little border town. And then he had a sister named Paula that was born. You're gonna see her um, in, the, uh, in the videos. Now, one of the things that you'll, that, that kind of is a mis misnomer is Paula um, in the movie, is portrayed to be older in the packet. Um, it's saying she was born in 1896, which is younger, right? Um, so I, I don't know, you know, it's a conflict on two of the resources that I have, right? How many times did Hitler's father marry? Three times, right? And obviously you'll see that um, Hitler's mom was the niece of Hitler's dad, which is kind of weird, right? Um, I, but I think it was commonplace back then, but probably taboo in today's society. All right, three, what did, did Hitler live across from when, when he was a little kid? He lived across from a Benedictine monastery. Uh, the Benedictine is an order of the Catholic Church, right? And um, you go to the second question, it says, what was on the coat of arms in the building? A swastika. So now, now, today, when we see the swastika, we think evil, um, racist, uh, neo-Nazis, skinheads, bad stuff, because they all kind of um, take off of Hitler's, um, you know, making that a bad symbol. But originally, the swastika was a religious symbol, right? And then what dream did he have when he was young? He dreamed in ordering, you know, becoming a, a priest. Right, that, you know, that was one of the many things he came and go on what he wanted to do. And how did his father treat him? 
right? Well, when he messed up or mouthed off or did something stupid, he got beat. Like you're going to see in the video, he burned his father's beehive down. His father came up and beat him, right? Um, but I just think that was normal. It was okay to spank your kids back then. People didn't look down on it. Today, um, if you spank your kids, you're a child abuser, right? Maybe I think, you know, I, re I know that when I went through school, if you messed up in school, they grabbed a paddle and they spanked you, right? And, uh, you know, so it made you not want to mess up in school anymore. Next one, number four, all right? It's on four. It says, what talents did Hitler show by 1900? All right, he could paint a little bit, right? Draw a little bit. Um, he, he and his mom thought he was way better than what he was. But if you go through and you get online, you can look up some of the art that he did. He was, he was, he did some things pretty good. All right. Why did Hitler enroll in real school? All right. Well, there are two kinds of schools. All right. The real school was more of a vocational type school. Um, but they had a drawing class and he wanted to draw. So he thought, hey, I'll go here, even though that school probably didn't fit what his talents were. All right. And how did he do in school? He didn't do well. All right. He, Failed a lot. He missed a lot of school. Was sick a lot, right? So therefore, school was a struggle for him, right? What happened to Hitler's father in 1903? Right, he dies. He's going to have a pleural hemorrhage, um, you know. So he's going to have a blood clot that's going to kill him, right? And um, so, what happened to Hitler by the time he was 16? Right, he had quit school. Why? Right, again, poor health. He was sick. Didn't do well in school. Um, so that was the problem. All right. We go to six. Where did Hitler visit in 1906? Um, he visited an art school in Vienna, which Vienna is the capital of Austria, capital city. All right. Why did he visit there? All right. Well, pretty simple. He's trying to get into art school. He thinks he's this great artist, All right? Which he really wasn't. Um, what happened to his mother while he was away? All right, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, which again back then was a death sentence. Today, you have a much, much better chance of surviving with all the treatments that they have. All right, next, who tried to help her? Um, the, 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 it was a Jewish doctor, all right? Edward Block was his name, all right? But he was Jewish, and again, it's just one of the many things that are probably going to contribute to his becoming an anti Semite later on in life. All right. What were some of the treatments? He tried an operation, a bunch of painful treatments. That was the beginning. They were starting to use radiation. So she was really, really sick, um, you know, down the, the tail end of her life when she, she was dying. She was in a lot of pain, and it was very hard for him to watch it. You can only imagine watching your mom go through a lot of pain. All right. Next one, number seven, says, what happened to Hitler in the years after his mom died? All right. Oh, I guess I did skip F. All right, and F, um, what was the result of her many treatments? She died. All right, let's go to seven. All right, so number seven, what happened to Hitler in the years after his mom died? All right, well, he ended up going back to Vienna, roaming around, um, trying to sell his paintings, continue to try to get into school. Now, he ended up staying in these flop houses or homeless shelters. So who owned a lot of the places where he stayed? Jewish people. They were Jewish philanthropists. And they were, you know, the, the, the Jewish people that owned these places were just trying to get people off the street so they weren't living on the street, right? Really nice, but, you know, they weren't nice places to live. And um, again, another reason that he ended up hating Jews, right? What kind of people did Hitler hang around? And this might be the most important while he was homeless in Vienna. And again, you got to understand, he's a teenager. He's young. He's very influential at this point in his life. Well, he's, he's in Vienna, and there was lots of anti-Semitic people in Vienna, all right, because the Jewish population of Vienna was small, <clears throat> and they were successful. They were really successful people, owned businesses, owned a lot of stuff, had money, had wealth, and the other people were jealous of them and angry, and so they became to hate them, all right? And, and this had been going on for centuries, but it, 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 anti-Semitism really hit its height during that time period when Hitler was a teenager in Vienna, all right? Let's go to D. Um, 
what is anti-Semitism, all right? Now, it's just very simple. People who hate Jews, all right? Anti-Semites or anti-Semitism. All right, let's go to eight. Where did Hitler go in 1913? All right, well, he moved to Munich. Now, you're going to see in the video, he's going to meet up with his sister. He's going to get some inheritance money. Talks about that in, in the packet a little bit. And he uh, is angry with the with Austria and the and the uh, you know all all there was a lot of foreign people because Munich or not Munich but Vienna was kind of the um, cultural center of Europe so people came from all over the world to Vienna and he didn't like all the foreigners there so he said I'm going to go where the more pure German people are and that's Munich which was way more just German people not a whole lot of foreigners right now let's go to B Y obviously oh oh and, and one of the reasons that he fled he didn't want to serve in the austrian army so to avoid serving in the the austrian military he went to munich <clears throat> right now um so eventually they're going to find him and they're going to force him to go report for duty so when he finally what happens to him when he finally appoint, goes to up to serve uh they said you know what he's too weak and sick so the Austrian army didn't end up even wanting him, you know, and um, and again, that's 1913. Well, think about what happens in 1914. 1914, all right, big event's going to take place, all right, leads us to question 9A, right? Who did Hitler get mad at um, when the Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated? Well, he got mad at foreigners. Those foreigners I was talking about up there when I was talking about Vienna, particularly Slavic people, all right, because the Black Hand Society, Gavarillo Princip, and those guys were Slavic people. And so now he, this, the killing of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand ends up creating a, a big time hatred and distrust for Slavic people in Hitler. Right. So, what army did he try to join? He, he tries to join the Bavarian army at this point. Right. And, um, and once the war starts, they said, we'll take anybody we can get our hands on. Right. Now, how long was it before Hitler um, gets into battle? Question 10A, um, right? Less than two months. So he joins the army, goes through a short basic training, and then bam, he's at the Western Front. So he's on the French, German, Belgian border, uh, right off the, ba the bat where <clears throat> we know trench warfare, and you guys learned about that, and everybody did a pretty good job on that. All right, what was Hitler awarded? All right, well, he won two iron crosses. Well, for bravery, he was a messenger, and he had to run through a lot of stuff, and, and you know, he, he, he saw some crazy action. All right, next, um, uh, part C, what was Hitler's rank? Highest rank that he achieved was corporal, um, which is pretty low. Um, and then what happened to Hitler near the end of the war in Belgium? Right, he got blinded by mustard gas. So when the war ended, he was in a hospital bed with bandages over his eyes. Right now, he obviously ends up, <coughs> excuse me, regaining his sight. All right, let's go to 11. All right, so who attempted to take over Germany shortly after the war? Um, well, obviously, the, the war ends and the communists are going to show up. And the communists are going to try to overthrow the government, take over the government. Right, and so who does this make Hitler hate? Right, Jews, but and then why? Because a lot of the communist leaders were Jewish. Okay, so all of this is going to play right into, you know, his eventual hatred of. You'll see in the movie, he's constantly calling out communists and Jews. He hates them both. Right now, what was a free corps? This is really important. Right, number twelve. They were former military members, so they were people that were in the German army. They come back, they get discharged out of the army because Germany, because of the Treaty of Versailles, was only allowed to have 100,000 soldiers. So you literally have millions of former soldiers still holding their guns. They're angry. They don't like these communists. They don't like Jews. So they start going after the communists. Now it says, um, who, who belonged to this group? All right. Um, the former military. I kind of answered the question twice there. It's you know, not very good on my part. Right. Who did they fight against? They're going to fight against the communists. Again, you're going to see this scene right when, when the, the scene after in the movie where he leaves the military hospital. You're going to see Ernest Strom and the, 
the free corps um you're going to see them attack the communists and start taking the communists down all right and then what did this group become once the nazis came to power all right well they became the brown shirts or the sa and they you're going to see them all through the movie Ernest Strom is going to be the guy who's kind of got a scar on his face. Um, Ernest Strom is the leader of that group, and, um, and and they were rowdy and radical and killed people in the streets and beat people in the streets, and Hitler liked it because it benefited him. All right, takes us to 13, the last of these. Because what kind of government was proclaimed in Germany after the war? All right, well, the, the, the government that got created was a republic, a democracy. Or the people elect representatives to go make uh, decisions for them. It was known as the Weimar Republic. Now that W has a V sound in German, so it was the Weimar Republic, not Weimar, but Weimar. And um, you go to B. What was the title of the leader of this government? He was called the Reich's President, and this is going to be um, Paul von Hindenburg. You're going to see him in the movie. He's the old guy. And he was the leader of the German military. He gets elected to be the president. How many officials were elected to its National Assembly? Like it's Congress, right? There are 423. Again, very similar to us. We have 425 in our House of Representatives. They have 423. What kind of parties were most successful in getting their candidates elected? Centrist or moderates, people that sat in the middle, not real conservative, not real liberal. So the, the middle of the road parties were the ones that were successful at the beginning. Right, and then we go to E, right? What what was this government referred to as? All right, it was referred to again up here. I, I put it up there. The Weimar Republic's what it was called. All right, list three things Germany agreed to by approving the treaty. Um, again, oh, I guess I skipped one here. It says what was the first thing they approved, and the first thing they approved was the Treaty of Versailles, and then G. List three things that they agreed to. They agreed to pay war reparations, which Hitler hates. No offensive weapons, so they're not going to allow to have any anything in their military that's going to allow them to attack somewhere else just to defend themselves. And then this demilitarized Rhineland and a bunch of other things. They One of the big ones was the war guilt clause that they had to take all the blame, right? So that's just three. I could have probably put 10 different things there in their G. And then finally, how did most German citizens feel about the treaty? Well, how they felt about the treaty is they were felt humiliated, especially that war guilt clause, that part that said that they had to accept the blame for causing the war and all the damages that they created. All right, so that is part one, all of the answers, all right? Um, and I just wanted to go through them with you. Um, hope you guys are having a great day. Um, get any questions, um, make sure that you, uh, uh, shoot me a message.